continuing our reading in Poppy's Return by Avi. Today is Chapter 7, Listening. Next morning, Poppy and Rye were up before daylight, going over family arrangements and special problems. Pip Sisua had an earache. Scrub Oak had to be reminded about his chores. Walnut needed to study his lessons more than he had been doing. Locust should be urged not to stay up too late reading the stars. Most importantly, when did Poppy hope she would return? As soon as possible, she said. I promise. I'll be right here waiting, said Rye. Are you really taking Mephitis? He asked. If he's not here on time, if not, uh, I'll go without him. And if Junior then decides not to go? At least I've tried. I know you have, said Rye, giving her a nuzzle. Actually, I think Junior went off to fetch Mephitis. I suppose I should have spoken to that skunk's parents, said Poppy. Too late now, but maybe you'd better tell Aerith you're leaving. You know how much he worries about you. Agreeing, Poppy went down the path to Aerith's log. Aerith, she cried, are you home? Ugh, asparagus teeth, came a reply from deep within the log. Of course I'm home. Where else would I be? Poppy smiled and went into the dim, foul-smelling log. Aerith was there sucking on his lump of salt, now no bigger than an acorn. When she appeared, he barely looked up. All he said was, mm, Have you any idea how good salt is? Aerith, I'll be going away for a while. Aerith looked up. Mm, where? I I'm afraid my father isn't well. That's why Lily came. I need to go see him. Uh, what the bat builds for? Really, Aerith, I would think it's uh, obvious. Lungward is my father. He's elderly. If he's not well, I need to see him. Wouldn't you go see your father if he were ill? No. Well, I'm different. Uh, you, you once told me you didn't like your father, said Aerith. Uh, remember that time we planted a tree in uh, uh, in honor of ragweed? The, the, the first ragweed? Oh, no. It was right near your father's house. Well, we didn't even see him. Because my father didn't like ragweed. <clears throat> or porcupines. Aerith, my father may be difficult, but... But what? Aerith, I believe children owe something to parents. My parents raised me, cared for me, protected me, fed me, looked after me. Oh, Poppy, said Aerith. Junior isn't here. You can turn down the vomit volume. You told me Lungwort made life miserable for you, restricted you, always wanted to keep you in your place. That was then, and... Uh, has anything changed? Poppy shrugged. I hope so. Oh. Uh, since when do parents get a free pass? Aerith, I'm going. When? This morning, right now. Now? Yes, and Lily's and... And? Junior. Junior. A grumpy goat's galoshes. What a picnic. Anyone else? Mephitis. <laughs> the skunk? Cried Aerith. Poppy nodded. <clears throat> Let me get this straight. You are going to a home with your sister who talks like a grammar book, your son who is rude, and a skunk you don't like, to your father you can't stand. Uh, have I got it all? Yes, said Poppy. Oh, fried frisbee freckles, cried Irith. This is as brainless as half-baked bagpipes. What are you punishing yourself for? Poppy closed her eyes. Besides, the porcupine demanded, who is going to protect you? Oh, goodness, Aerith, that's silly. Mm, I'm going with you. No, Aerith, you, you will not, Poppy said quickly. First of all, I, I can protect myself. Second, this is a private family matter. I'm not interested in leading a parade. Besides, you need to stay here and help Rye. Now, goodbye. Uh, I'll be back soon. With that, Poppy reached up 
on her hind legs, gave Aerith a quick kiss on the tip of his nose, then hurried away. Aerith stared cross-eyed at his nose. Poppy headed back toward the snag and was halfway there when she saw Mephitis and Junior. They were so alike in looks, yet so different in size, that Poppy almost laughed. Poppy considered the skunk. She really did not know anything about him. She didn't even know where he lived, or who his parents were, or how much Junior and he had become friends, or why, for that matter. She had tried to talk to the skunk, but Mephitis was not given to small talk, since he couldn't fit into the snag. More often than not, Junior spent his time at the skunk's house. Once again, Poppy regretted never having gone over to introduce herself to Mephitis' parents. As she drew closer to the snag, she saw that Rye and the children had gathered to say goodbye. Lily was waiting, too. But as Poppy arrived, she saw that her sister's whiskers were stiff and her tail was twitching. Poppy, can I speak to you for a moment privately? Lily asked. The two sisters went off a few steps. Poppy, said Lily, her lips pursed and her paws folded tightly, is that skunk coming along? Out of the corner of her eye, Poppy could see that Mephitis was watching them. She said, he and Junior are best friends. Hmm. Frankly, Lily said, I don't think it wise. He seems rather surly. He'll be fine said Poppy, wishing she believed it. She broke away from Lily and went up to the skunk. Mephitis, I understand you want to go with us. Mephitis pointed his sharp nose to the ground. When he and Poppy met, which was not often, he usually dropped his tail and looked anywhere but at her. It made Poppy feel uncomfortable, as if the skunk were hiding something. I guess, he murmured, as much to the ground as to her. I'm glad, very glad you're coming, Poppy forced herself to say. And is it right, is it all right with your parents? Ah, come on, Mama, called Junior. Don't be so freaking nosy. He turned to his friend and belched. The skunk grinned and the two slapped paws over Poppy's head. Poppy winced and started to say something more, but decided she didn't want to begin the trip in an even worse mood. Instead, she looked around. She caught Rye's gaze. He winked. It made Poppy smile. I guess it's time to go, she said in her best chippy, chirpy squeak. Rye lined the children up in a row. Poppy went down the line, hugging and nuzzling each one, giving final bits of advice. Pipsasua, please help your father. Walnut, a little less scrubbing scrabbling with your sisters. Snowberry, don't forget to wash your face. Verbena, do clean up after yourself. Last in line was Rye. Please be safe, she whispered into Poppy's. Please be safe, he whispered into Poppy's ear as he gave her a hug. Don't worry about us. We'll be perfectly fine. Send my regards to your family, especially your father. Poppy turned to whisper into Rye's right ear the one that bore a little notch from a childhood accident, which somehow made Poppy it Poppy's favorite. I'll try to make this as fast as I possibly can, she promised. Just remember, he said with a final hug, your family will be waiting right here for you. I'll miss you, Poppy whispered, and I you. Poppy turned about and looked at Lily and Junior, as well as Mophitis. Well then, she said, more brightly than she felt. Here we go! Off she started with Lily at her side and Junior and Mephitis trailing along behind. Goodbye! Goodbye! Bye-bye! cried all the other children as well as Rye. Goodbye! They watched and called until the traveling party had disappeared into the woods. Rye was the last to turn away. Just as he did, he saw Aerith come rushing down the path from his log. Oh, zappy zit jelly, cried the porcupine. Has Poppy already gone? They just left. Mm, which way? Down that path. Fine, uh, I'm going with them, cried Irith. Don't touch my salt. And with that, he trundled after the tra travelers. Irith, Rye called, come back. But Irith was out of sight. And that's the end of chapter seven.